The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. All righty, folks. Going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, right here on TFNN.com. And let's check out where the markets are at right now. Get you your lunchtime market update. We got the Dow is in positive territory, but is losing ground quickly. And looking on over, it's uh, it's currently up at 25 points. We got the S&P is down three and a half points. The Nasdaq is leading the charge, getting hammered down over 40 points today. Right now, we got the Russell is currently down 3.8. Oil down a mere 17 cents at the moment. And um, hopping on over, looking at let's see, silver. We got silver is in positive territory by 0.044. We got natural gas is slightly down um down 0 0.007 so not too much of a change right there at the moment we got corn and soybeans corn is positive up two and a quarter points and soybeans are pretty much flat on the day um just fluctuating right around the unchanged mark from yesterday's settlement we got over gold gold is currently down a point and a half we got copper is just barely positive pretty flat on the day a lot of bouncing going on, though. A lot of fast volatility in the markets, which we like. We got over to ASEAN. ASEAN right now is down 88 pips. We got pound dollars spiking, flying up 153 pips on the day. We got the euro pound right now is down 14. We got the pound yen is up 29. We went over the euro yen is down 13. We got the dollar CAD down 14 or up 14. And then I look at dollar francs down 49 pips right now. Dollar yen is down 107 pips. So dollar gaining some major strength against several of those currencies right there. And uh, if we go in, we look at, let me pull up. I want to pull up the dollar index right now. It is just slightly positive. So definitely a bit of a battle going on at the moment. And let's see here. We got euro dollar. Uh, dollar is currently weaker against the euro with the uh, euro up 82 pips so pound dollar euro dollar being the you know major uh, part of that basket pulling it up but against a couple of the other currencies like franc and yen um it's leading so uh you know bonds also slightly in positive territory at the moment so we got dollar index up and bonds up um slightly all right well that gives you your current uh lunchtime market wrap um oil had quite a bit of gains but uh crude stock was not so good uh, came in at dropped by another 3.6 million barrels. Uh, so the stock went down. Let's see how that compares. That's what the expectation was. But uh, the actual numbers that came out, uh, the reserves decreased this week by 3.6 million barrels from the previous week. Uh, but still at 485 million, they're still at record highs, not seen for the last 80 years. So sort of the same, much the same story going on. Uh, if we go over... Look at some of the headlines happening in the markets. And uh, oil gives up gains. Crude stocks dropped by 3.6 million barrels. So uh, right there. So there's just, you know, a lot of stuff going on that you can check out. But uh, still giving you plenty of volatility. So European stocks uh, ended lower on the day. And uh, right there. So we got the FTSE pretty much flat. And uh, the DAX down half percent. So, of course, still going, still moving. And uh, most of the European bonds ended positive on the day. And like I said, three of the four U.S. indices right now are currently in negative territory. Uh, we'll get on over for major U.S. indices. And then um, moving on over to Canadian stocks, uh, TXX rising as commodity, commodity prices offer some relief. So uh, the main uh, the TSX is the main index right there in Canada. And it bounced off its weakest close in two years. So uh, we'll see if that's a dead cap bounce or exactly what's going on. But it's been uh, pretty pretty rough. Pound dollar extends uh, its rally. It's, like I said, just busting on out. And uh, we'll see where you know they have it on here. But like I said, we just uh, last uh, number here, we were up 153 pips. 
And let's see, we're pretty much we're just right off the high. Or that's the, let's see, let me, what do we got for the highs today? And if I can find that, yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're just. I mean, you know, fifteen or so pips off the highs right now. So, um, you know, definitely, you know, some major, major strength right there. Uh, pushing higher against the dollar, so weakening dollar. Um, obviously, I think this is obviously a big setup going into the upcoming interest rate announcement next week, whatever it may, you know, whatever may come of that. So, obviously, the rumor is they're raising rates, or are they, or you know what? But uh, we'll see. Pound dollar broke above uh, post ECB highs and stretched to a peak of 1.5178, a little bit further than that, with the pair holding at highs and aiming to retest again. Uh, the 1.52 area. So that will be a obviously a major area there. At the time of writing, the pair is trading at 5173, a 1% daily gain following three consecutive losses. Um, so we'll see where it goes, but uh, you know, keep your eye on the 50, 100, 200 day moving average, psychological levels, round numbers like 200, things like that, all coming into uh, play as some of the things that you want to look at. Uh, look at on over. Greek stocks getting crashed to 30-month lows. Um, so trading restrictions got lifted, and uh, when they got lifted, then they got hammered. And let's see if we can get this one to come on up. It's having a hard time showing. Um, anyways, but we'll come back to that one later. Anyways, uh, Greek stocks crashing on down. They lifted some of the trading restrictions off, and uh, it literally just slammed them. Let's see. All right. Well, that catches us up for just our major news and our lunchtime market wrap period. And I'm working on getting a few other things loaded up for you that we might be able to go through today as well. Uh, let me see here. Okay. So I'll get that loading up. We'll see some charts start popping up everywhere. Um, so one of the things uh, that you know happens pretty much is about to come up, you know, being December, uh, I'll be the end of quarter rollover. Um, and so just a reminder, make sure you are on the current contract with the higher liquidity, or if you're trading Nadex, that you're on the Nadex specific, specified contract, uh, because Nadex is the North American derivative exchange. You're trading an option that is based on a specific month of the future contract. And so when you're trading that, you want to make sure that, you know, whatever contract is showing, um, for instance, on the Nadex platform is the one that you select. And so if it says December, then you use the December future contract. So that'd be like ES1215 or ESZ5. It would depend upon, you know, what platform you're using. Or Thinkorswim does a pretty decent job of auto rollover if you just put like forward slash ES in. Um, but it on like rollover day, it can get pretty wacky and not merge the data correctly sometimes. So sometimes it's better to manually know what the symbol is, be able to put it in. Um, you can type it in, it'll usually show them to you as well uh, when you're using the platform. Or on NinjaTrader, just update your instrument list. So, uh, But very important to keep on top of that on you know, any futures that you're trading. And to remember that the that Nadex is following the futures market. It's not following like the SPX index or the SPY ETF. It's following the ES futures on their S&P 500 contracts. So there's a lot of lessons to know there, but, um, you know, so there are a couple things I can show you here is if we go into like CME group and go to trading, let's say you're looking at equity indexes, okay? And you go down here and you look at the S&P 500, E-mini's there. You can look at the volume. Right now there's 1,270,000 contracts um, as of 10 minutes ago on the S&P on the December contract. There's 160,000 on March, and as you can see, then like 66, and then like zero and zero, dropping down. So what's going to happen is that March is going to pick up more and more and more until it eventually rolls, because December will become the you know cash settlement month. And once we hit that cash settlement date, we can get into all sorts of fun details about it. But the main thing is, we'll get that volume, and when it rolls, that's when you know to roll. There will be often dates saying your broker may send out, hey, the S&P 500 and these indices are rolling over. Make sure you roll over. And I get that, but you don't have to do it that second because you got that email or because you saw some notice somewhere. Um, 
if you're trading the future contracts, look at the volume, and the volume will tell you what contract to focus on. The majority of the time, there's weird things called Cantango and stuff, but you're not going to have that issue with indices. Um, so just look at that volume. Now, if you're trading Nadex and they say, hey, we've moved to the March contract, you move. Because otherwise, you're going to be looking at the wrong contract, and there can be a, you know, a, diff a definite difference in price. Like right now, there's about eight points difference in price, which is basically interest um, over you know course of period of time. And we can go into fund calculations on that, cost to carry, interest swap. But there's a difference in the price between the December contract and the March contract. You'll see how right here we said December trading it. You know, again, this is 10 minutes delayed, but 2055 and March at 2047. So June 2041, September 2036. So you definitely want to be on the right contract when you're trading a derivative contract, especially when it expires you know, that week, that day. You want to make sure you're on that correct month. Uh, they, you know, usually, at least on indices, move like right in locked up. You can see there is a slight difference. One's down three and a half, one's down four, one's down 2.25. So uh, there can be a slight difference, but no matter what, like you're just, you're going to make mistakes if you're not looking at the right contract. And it's not hard to, again, um, Nadex itself, if you just log onto their platform, will literally say it in the contract. So if you just log in, they'll even put up an announcement right there. Let's see here. And what you'll see is uh, they'll pop announcements up whenever they do roll over. And you can see us is like oil, January contract, corn, March. You see that MAR right there, okay? Um, soybean, January, silver, March. So all that's right there. I also, I put that in the scanner for you to make that even easier. So you can easily view um, what contract it should be. It's up there at the top on every contract. Uh, it pops up an announcement whenever there is a roll. So, you know, sort of helping keep you in line so you don't make the mistake because that's just one of the simplest, easiest mistakes I've seen um, so many traders make. And if I go over here and bring this up, then you can see, like, if we go in and select, say, you know, S&P, it'll say December right there. So it'll tell you the number format, ES1215. It'll even tell you the month code format, ESZ5. And if you want to get more specs about, you know, what is the underlying market and all that stuff, just click on that little chain right there, and that will get you to what hours it trades and what the widths are and the position limits are and the tick sizes and how they compare and the ratio and all sorts of fun stuff. So, uh, but that right there is meant one more benefit of the scanner, helping make things easier for you. But rollover is very important. And just wanted to bring the things back to your attention for your newbies out there, anybody who may uh, want to learn more about futures. Stay right there. We'll be back right after this. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. 
In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Daryl, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All righty, folks, well, I'm back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We've had some excellent trends going on, a lot of good moves happening right now, so I'm just sort of watching and seeing if we get any new trade developments, but pretty much everything is still on the short. Uh, we got uh, potentially another breakdown. We'll see. Uh, got stops trailed down pretty good and um, on all the U.S. indices right now. And... Uh, NASDAQ had another nice pop down there. So we're just sort of watching everything. We got the S&P has been moving just in a nice, smooth trend down like 30 points here in the last couple of hours. So we'll see if we uh, get some more of that uh, price action. It looks like it might want to break down below, but we are down uh, pretty much right at, what does that look like? Um, we're almost back to, let's see, 1.42 is like the movement on the uh, deviation level at this point. So one and a half deviations. We'll see if it has enough strength to continue on and bust through. Volume is rising on this decline. It's yet to show that it wants to pull back yet. So uh, I'll keep an eye on that. We'll see if we get another trade entry. But right now, just uh, throwing my stops on down on those shorts. Okay, let's go and let's look at where we're at on what news we got that you need to be aware of for this week. Um, so we got uh, we are on Wednesday, December 9th. Tonight, we're going to have a few different reports of some Aussie employment change is coming on out tonight. So 
We'll go on over here. We'll look at that. And that's going to be a neutral looking play. Looks like about 35 pips uh, usually coming out of the Aussie employment numbers. And so we're looking for 35 pips minimum profit on an iron condor, which we're buying the lower spread on the Nadex exchange at Nadex.com. Selling the upper spread. They issue three spreads at 6 that go to 11 o'clock. They'll have an upper, upper, a middle, and a lower. And um, so the middle one we ignore. Upper and lower will have um, premium built into them because they'll be right at the money on that strike and uh, where the market's at. And that's uh, where we're looking to take advantage of that premium. So right there from 6 to 11 for 35 bucks. Uh, going on over, we got uh, the Frank also coming out tonight. 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. has their LIBOR rate, their interest rate. Um, and press conference. And uh, SMB is always a fun one to trade at the rate after they <laughs> messed with everything. But um, usually a pretty quiet thing except for one major one, which was fortunately I was on the right side of that one, but a lot of people weren't. But um, at this point right now, it's like they're pretty much leaving everything the same. That's the expectation at the moment. Uh, 35 pip uh, iron condor getting defined risk trade. Very, very, very important on these interest rate trades and employment rate trades. And it does look like, by the way, we are getting some more shorts right now that are looking pretty good. Um, let's see here. Digging in a little bit deeper, trying to see. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so 35 pips, iron condor, lower and upper. Pound has pretty much the exact same trade. So really, Aussie pound and dollar franc all easy, except for the franc and the pound are starting for 11 p.m. and go to 7 a.m. And the Aussie starting at 6 and going to 11 p.m. But all of them are 35 pips. Buy the lower spread, sell the upper spread, combination trades. Uh, tomorrow morning, pound bank rate's coming out. Um, it is, I'd be careful. It's been moving a lot, but unless there's some surprise, it usually stays in a quiet range. Um, today we had such a massive move on the pound. And, uh, so I would <clears throat> use extreme caution on this trade for tomorrow. Um, this is our normal play, our 10 out of 12, but, uh, you know, we have had one big mover on this. We may have another one. And so, uh, anyway, it was 30 pips. That's entering at six to 8 AM for a 30 pip minimum profit. Again, defined at risk trade on these trades right here looking on over uh let's see what else we can find go in and let's see we got friday we're gonna have some various reports coming on up retail sales core retail sales ppi core ppi uh best trade on that usually is on the euro dollar between seven and nine as far as consistency so entering at 7 for a 9 a.m. expiration for a minimum profit of $35 on the trade. So that's uh, the main trade that we're looking for right there. And that's our Friday news trade. Let me see as far as next week. What all do we have up? What can we get going on here? Uh, let's see. Well, we got our a uh, couple things to be aware of. Aussie Monetary Policy Meeting Minutes coming on out. Um, next, uh, Monday evening, but the, uh, two, uh, interest or the two, uh, iron condors will be on the Frank and the pound again from 11 to seven. Um, one on the Frank on Monday, uh, from 11 PM to 7 AM. And that will be on their PPI news and on the pound on the CPI core CPI and their PPI and RPI outputs. All those numbers together. We'll get 11 PM to 7 AM, 35 bucks. Stay right there and we'll get you caught up for the upcoming week. What do you think about the rate? Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And it's catching you up on the news coming up over the next week. Uh, we got the markets. They did do one little push down right there. And they're uh, working on pulling back right now. So we'll see if they decide to, uh, that's just a little bit of relief on the way down. It's going to keep pushing or not. But it did have a nice little extra one-two combo right there that uh, pushed on through. Let's see uh, where we're at right now. We might get another setup on a few of these trades but uh just sort of watching and seeing if it can re-break the lows there on the dow and the nasdaq and all that and if it wants to move on through if it does then uh because we can get some more trades uh pull a couple charts up here for you you see these it's sort of just a quick uh, view of all the indices and like i said it's been moving down really really smooth and just sort of watching at the moment to see if they can break down further and uh, it looks like they are definitely uh, trying to do so. So we may uh, get some even more price action going on. This has been a fantastic day. Trader's dream day, uh, as I saw in the Tigers Den posted. Um, so, and uh, you got to, you know, what is it, uh, Ben Lichtenstein? You know, to be here for the good days, you got to be here for all the days. And uh, 
you know, but you got to be ready. So whenever it's happening, I mean, you got to be ready, willing to pull that trigger and make it happen. And uh, we're getting some, we're getting some nice movement. So Nasdaq like uh, Dow just broke down again, making a new low. Nasdaq moving on down, all uh, pushing down pretty heavy. The S and P's uh, almost at a one dev level right now. And looking on over, we're at about a one dev level on the Dow. We're pushing down at one and a half on the Nasdaq. It's we'll see if we can break through, get a swing breakout right there possibly, um, as well on the nasdaq and um, for you know nice little 10 tick scalp along with the nice trend that's been moving um and hopefully i mean if you weren't trading today if you if you were trading today unless you just like to try to go counter trend i mean you should uh have a nice prop been up nice and profitably today if not we need to talk so um let's see you're trying to see anything else i can bring up that might be helpful on there we go. Marcus, I was trying to get something up over on the other side, but it's not showing me what I want. Um, let's see here. What do we got? My setup. We're getting a lot of oscillation right now, and volume is starting to back off a little bit. Starting to actually get a little bit of strength on volume. It looks to the upside. So it might be time for things to start pulling on back up and taking that profit. Um Let's see here. All right. So, yeah, I definitely got to take every trade setup regardless. Uh, very wise advice is, you know, get yourself in the way. Like either you trade, trust your system or you don't. And if you don't, then step back and reanalyze it, put the pieces together. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay, so going into next week, pulling on up the uh, Euro and German Zoo Economic Sentiment Report right there, 5 a.m. coming on out. Uh, but the trade is going to be a little bit later, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., Euro dollar 25 pips on the core CPI and CPI. Um, and then a little bit later on this coming Tuesday, we have CAD manufacturing sales, foreign security purchases. Again, non major event. Um, we are going to have a pretty big move of the pound. I was going to have usually uh, does really well on their unemployment rate, along with their average earning index and climate count change all coming out at once. But uh, this usually is a straddle moment. So again, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., 4 30 a.m. is when the release comes out. Usually uh, we're looking for a risk of. $40 between the bot upper spread and sold lower spread opposite of an iron condor. Looking for a nice big move um, on this trade. Uh, we'll be doing the same thing as straddle on the oil inventory on Wednesday and natural gas inventory on Thursday. Uh, other things we have coming out uh, next week, we're going to have the uh, Euro final CPI. Important, but not big moving. Um, usually 35 pips or less. So we're looking for 35 pips buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread, collecting that premium. Um, we said CAD uh, manufacturing foreign security purchases, limited that one to 25 pips. It's a very, very flat period for the CAD. Um, U.S. building permits, uh, 30 pips on the euro dollar that morning. And uh, U.S. capacity utilization, 30 pips for the euro dollar from 10.30 or from 8 to 10 as well. Um and, of course, after all that news comes out right there in the morning, then things get really quiet as we head into the FOMC awaited Fed funds rate. So uh, if you're looking forward to that, then you're on track with a lot of other traders who are looking forward to it. Uh, there's a big expectation of change. Uh, there ought to be a lot of premium, a lot of premium. A lot of people are going to go in thinking that they're going to be really smart and they're going to try to straddle this thing, Okay. They're trying to straddle this news, and which means basically, hey, if it moves up or down far enough, I make money. Well, that sounds great, except for the fact that the market makers think this thing's going to move big, too. So what they're going to do is they're going to inflate the premium, and it's going to be expensive, like stupid expensive is my expectation, okay? Um, and I think we'll easily be able to hit these premiums. I mean, check them out. You know, pay attention to them, but uh, Fed Fund's. Is looking to release. We're looking at an iron condor on the Euro USD. And I'll go into some more of these uh, for at least 50 pips. We want iron condor on the pound dollar for at least 50 pips. But uh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to update this with a lot more details for you before we get to next week. But I think there'll be at least this much premium, if not a lot more uh, premium on this trade. So we want to look at this. Let's see. Uh, 
Uh, anyway, so we're going to have that Fed fund report, and I want to see some. Let me check on this fund report over here. If next week, pull it up and see. Hey, I'll try that one more time. Just moving the arrow on me. And here on the 16th, Fed funds rate. Yeah, they're going to have a press conference too. Um, so uh, with that press conference, with everything that's coming out, we need to make sure... Uh, uh, you know, be careful, but expect a lot of premium. So don't go in and think you're just going to outsmart it. By the way, those entities are still moving down. It's pretty nice. Uh, and, uh, you know, expect there to be a lot of premium. So the smarter play may, I mean, if you can get them cheap, if you can go in and get the options cheap, then great. Do a straddle. You know, the, we expect a big move. But be aware that those options may be really expensive. And it may, you know, you need to know where your break-even points and your one-to-one -one reward ratio points are. You may be a lot better off doing an iron condor and collecting premium. It may make a lot more sense if you sit down and do the math. So make sure you're practicing on those. Um, and let's see here. Um, we got, um, and there's also iron condors you can do before it. Now, They've got a little smarter on this one. Uh, somebody, I think, got a pay raise or something. But uh, we used to be able to get iron condors before the Fed funds rate. So if they have that interest built or that, that premium built in before the announcement, for the ones that expire at 2 o'clock, then um, a couple of them could be pretty nice. So we're at $25 on the Aussie dollar. Okay, so that's just 90 minutes before. So entering at 1230 for 2 o'clock. We got uh, $40 for the pound dollar, 30 for the dollar CAD, 40 for the dollar franc, and 30 for the dollar yen. Um, so that, that can make it for a nice setup. Uh, you can go in an hour before. And the expected, this is also expected range. So the number I'm giving you, these pips, is also dollars, is also the expected pip movement. Aussie dollar, entering, uh, these are all entering at 1 o'clock for a 2 o'clock expiration. 20 for Aussie dollar, 30 for euro dollar, 35 for pound dollar. 25 for dollar CAD, 34 dollar franc, and 25 for dollar yen. Okay. So that right there will catch up on those. And then we also even got ones that are 30 minutes before expiration. And uh, so entering at, you know, 134, 2 o'clock, uh, 20 pips on Aussie dollar, 25 on euro dollar, 30 on pound dollar, 20 on dollar CAD, 25 on dollar franc, and 20 on dollar yen. And of course, we're going to have the FOMC interest rate come out at 2, and then the press conference comes out at 2.30, which causes even more volatility. <coughs> Pardon me. So you're going to be, um, you know, just be cognizant of all these different pieces that are coming out. If you are not used to interest rate announcements, then you need to sit and watch multiple ones from multiple countries, understand how they impact multiple markets. So it's one of those, this is big boy market territory, and even they get crushed, Okay. So that's one reason I like using Nadex when trading these interest rate announcements is because I have defined risk. So if I just do something stupid or wrong or something really wacky happens, then at least my risk is defined in the trade, uh, especially when they can move extremely lightning fast. Um, now going on over to Wednesday night, we got pound retail sales at 4.30 a.m., and so uh, this is next Wednesday coming on up. So 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., $35 minimum profit on the pound retail sales report. And uh, we'll have, like I said, our natural gas. And then next Friday, we've got the CAD, various reports, coming in at 8.30 a.m., so 8 to 10 um, on the CPI and core CPI and wholesale sales. So that gives you your next week's lineup this upcoming week for doing your news trades. And um, even if you don't trade the news, even if you don't trade Nadex, all these numbers are very helpful because if you trade these markets that I talk about, then you know what the expectation is when that report comes out between that time frame, and you can use those expectations to be a step ahead of the market. And uh, in diagnostic trading, 
something I've not talked about for a while, but I've used diagnostic trading hour. But uh, we look at fundamentals, statistics, technicals, and seasonals. So this is obviously a fundamental and a statistical and a seasonal um, tie-in because what we're looking at is we're looking at, hey, this comes out when this release happens. That's the seasonality of when that report comes out. It's a fundamental news report, okay? And what are the statistics on how the market moves when that report is released? And so that's put all this stuff together. And then I tie in technicals like looking at deviation levels and things of that sort to go, okay, what's the expected move and where are we tied into and things like that as well. But again, diagnostic trading is using technicals, fundamentals, seasonals, okay, and statistics to be one step ahead of the markets. And um, other examples of, you know, um, statistics would be deviation levels themselves because that's a statistical probability of movement between a range. And most traders don't have any expectation of movement. They have no idea how far a market should move based on option pricing. And that's where deviation levels come in. They pull what's called the expected movement or implied volatility out of the option market. Well, what is the option market? Well, it's basically where all, you know, big to little, all traders put their money where their mouth is. What are they willing to pay for a derivative option insurance on an underlying market? What is the expected movement to make it worth or not worth it? So we go in. And my server is built now to go in and pull options for 22,000 markets, pulls out the um, expected movement, puts that into a formula, and gives you the exact number of the expected move and is amazingly spot on time and time again, um, providing insane accuracy that is very, very helpful. Uh, I mean, like right now, S&P, the expected move was for it to move down to 20, 36.75 and it moved to 2036.5. So uh, we're you know right at the expected move, and things are starting to pull back. The Dow is starting to push up at the moment. Okay, the Dow sitting at a little over a one deviation move, but down on the but bouncing off the 0.7 deviation level exactly. Uh, we got Nasdaq stopping and hovering right now. Got a nice small trade. You got a few points out of that. Uh, <coughs> if you trailed your stops well. And on that short trade we were talking about there earlier. Um, but, I mean, it basically is hovering right at one and a half deviations. Russell sitting right at one deviation. Let me show you. Just uh, here we'll zoom this in a little bit more for you. And uh, let me see here. Right there. So here's the S&P. See, sitting right there at one deviation and bouncing right off of it. Nat, you know, Dow coming down to 0 0.7, um, actually exceeding one deviation where it's at right now. Both of them at one and a half because you got uh, the high to the low measurement as well. But uh, bouncing right off that deviation level, that 0 0.7 mark. We're going over here. We got NASDAQ hovering right at the one and a half. Deb Mark, they're pretty much all at one and a half. And uh, you got the Russell at one and a half deviations right here. It's one deviation down, one and a half deviation high to low. But right at that, say, those blue lines right there, which are, again, I get those numbers out every day at 830, um, and bouncing right off of it. So that statistical probability is massive on having proper expectations of movement. So, you know, you go, ah, man, if it breaks this, it's going to go. Where is it going to go? How far is it going to go? How far should I expect it to move? That's where the deviation levels come in. Objective based on market participation pricing. Stay there. We'll be back right after this break. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EvaBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six-month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one. It's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. 
Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options. I speak with one of the banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. All righty, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And I'm uh, just going over, you know, diagnostic trading in the target is basically looking at things that other traders look at, whether it be, you know, big traders, little traders, whatever. But, you know, it's just like looking at, you know, 200 moving averages, 50 moving averages, things like that. But more than just the technicals. So things that traders often don't think to look at that the funds are looking at, like, in, like a deviation move. Uh, you know, risk models are built on two deviation moves. So that means that they don't expect them to move beyond two deviations a majority of the time, which is a 97% of the time things will stay within a two deviation move. Now, I'm not talking about simple standard deviation because that's based on past price movement. I'm talking about implied deviation based on expected future movement. Well, how can anybody know? Well, nobody in themselves can know. But if you take a poll of all the market participants that are putting their money where their mouth is by buying the options, then you get a really good idea, and the market is always right. You may have heard that before. 
So that's the market. That's the whole group participation model. Everybody putting their money where their mouth is. How far do they say that the market is going to move? And that's the number we use to pull out and pull out the deviation levels. Like I said, we got about 22,000 markets now and uh, growing. And uh, so it's constantly you know, trying to grab more and more data out there and make it easier and easier to do. But by using this knowledge, by using statistical knowledge, seasonal knowledge, fundamental knowledge, like just knowing when the news is coming out, you'd be surprised how many crude traders I've talked to. They're like, why did that move happen? It's like, well, it's inventory, you know, or why did that move happen on the pound? Well, it's their retail sales, you know. They don't know about the, the fundamental news announcements. It's not that you have to be a news trader. The news is going to happen whether or not you're aware of it. So it's wiser to be aware of it and how it impacts the market that you trade if there is a consistent impact or not. And if there's not, then, hey, you just focus on the charts. No matter what, you got to focus on the charts. But be aware. I don't care if you focus on the charts or not. When Fed funds rate comes out, if you're trying to trade directional, you know that's going to be pretty hard to do because it's going to fly. So, uh, again, taking that statistical, fundamental, seasonal, okay, and to all the different pieces and technical pieces and putting all four of those pieces together to be one step ahead of the markets. Knowing that, hey, it's coming down. The Russell's hitting one deviation level. Probably not the place to add the shorts. Going to look for chop. It doesn't mean it can't break it, okay? But it does mean it's going to hesitate at it, and it does. And you see it ruined one, one deviation. Boom, bounced off it. It may come back down. It may break through it, but I'm going to want to see some confirmation at the current moment. I'm just going to want to take my money off the table or at least trail my stop down so I don't give it all back because that's it could easily fly back up a deviation from there too. Um, so it's just knowing, hey, where, where do I expect the market to go? Where do I need to keep my stops at? And keep that objective number versus where I think I'm drawing support resistance. I may be right. I may be wrong. And those are all nice and good things. And there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're intelligent to, to draw out. But also going, hey, you know, let's, let's really get objective on this and go today, how far does the market expect the market to move? And you'll be amazed if you go out and draw support resistance levels and Fibonacci levels and things like that. How much of these? I mean, I, this happens all the time on the Friday show with uh, me and Tommy O'Brien and Tommy Jr. And we go through and they'll talk, call out levels and I'll call it the exact same level. But that's good. That's confluence. That's, you know, multiple things leading to the same consensus. Strong price levels helps us form really good trades. We all stay right there. We got another show coming up for you right after this. And uh, see you soon on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.